Okay, there's the heart of it, promise. You see, particularly in the Old Testament and many that flow over to the New Testament, vows, we call them something else too. What, what do we call them? We use the word a lot at weddings. It's a C word. Covenant, yeah. It is the same thing, a vow or a promise made either to God or from God. God makes a lot of covenants. Can we think, I've, I've written down four of them real quick, covenants in the Bible. Can you think of four? They have official names, some of them. Yes. Yes. Davidic, yes. It's the official word. Okay. I have an addition to those, the Mosaic and the Noahic covenant. Okay, there are many covenants. There are some folks that are covenant theologians. All right, uh, Baptist theology is not. Okay, Free Presbyterians would be uh, an example, and they are a reformed position. Which I'm not teaching on this; it has nothing in my notes. But I just want to tell you some little facts to throw out. They believe. As we believe that God treated mankind differently according to different principles, or I don't know how you say that, in seven dispensations of time, they believe that there are different covenants, and God ruled people according to these covenants. I think those covenants overlap the dispensations, and probably it is a combination of, of a thought there. But just not to throw you off track, but to tell you this, to God, his promises are important. And he expects men that their promises would be important too. How often is it easy to break a promise in 2009 time? If a guy tells you something, he's going to be here at a certain time or whatever, or he's going to do a certain thing, do you take it as 100% gospel? We can't, can we? What most of the time, you're not smart unless you do what? If it's, really, if it's really something like you're selling something or doing something legal, what do you do? you got to have a document. And if you're really serious about it, you do what? You get it notarized. And you, you uh, have witnesses. And I mean, I mean, we are, and all of these things are because it's not enough anymore to make a promise. It has to be backed up by legal lees. Okay? I say that to say this. In the Old Testament, promises were extremely important. There were Old Testament men that took their promises very serious to God. Do you remember who Jephthah was? And every time, when I see the word vow, I think about this guy. This guy, it was a matter of a battle, and, God, and he said, if God, if you, will, if you will let me win the battle, then when I return home, the first thing that I see, I will sacrifice to you. And what was it? His daughter. His daughter. And... I would love to tell you the end of the story was that he confessed his, his sin and said, I made a rash vow. I'll have to, learn, I'll have to live with my, my lying to you, Lord. But the, the deal was that men in that day took their vows seriously, and he slayed his daughter. Okay? You can see vows were pretty, pretty important, which, you know, pretty serious in those days. A covenant should be very serious now, a promise. It's, uh, it's, it is a binding promise. The word covenant is agreement between two or more people. A vow made either by the Lord or, fr or from the Lord or to the Lord by men. It's not a flippant thing. Very serious. You say, what do these dedications and these vows have to do with us? Should we be making vows to promise this and promise this, promise this? No, I don't think that there is New Testament teaching on vows. You do see the Apostle Paul who made a vow. He shaved his head at one point. Uh, making a vow after he came to, to the Lord, but he was a Jew, okay, it's different. He was living a, a, a vow of the Old Testament at that time. But, considering vows to a believer, when God promised you salvation, he asked something of you. And he asked something of me, and that was, he asked us to dedicate ourselves to the Lord. You say, what do you mean? We think of salvation as free gift, and it absolutely is a free gift. And we can never repay it by vowing anything or keeping anything to the Lord or dedicating or devoting anything. You can't pay back salvation. Amen? Is that right? Is that right? Okay. And, and who could, what could you give? I mean, you can never repay it, so even if he, he asked you to, it couldn't be done. However, it, he, doesn't just, he doesn't just allow that concept to, to just fall off the map in the New Testament. What he asks of you is this, 
I have given you everything. I've given you salvation. I ask that you dedicate yourself as a complete offering to me to live yourself, as, live your life as a living sacrifice, that you would be my workmanship to good works, that you would be my ambassador, that you would be a vow, a dedication to me. I want you. Now, let me ask you a question. Is that reasonable? Are you sure? Well, then we better turn there, Mr. Heckler. Romans chapter 12, please. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. When God gave you a free gift of salvation, he asks something in return. It does not pay for it. It's not, he's not going to hold it back if you do not give it. He is, our salvation is secured by his blood. It was a free gift. However... He asks you not to tonight not to balk at something, and that is to present your body and your mind as a sacrifice to him, a living sacrifice. He wants all of you. You know, it's funny when I say that, that if you are really thinking tonight and you're not in la-la land of the Wednesday night, that probably there's something that twinges inside of you. Because if you really understand what I'm saying, that God wants all of you, you may in your humanity say, well, that's a pretty good, big thing to ask. Let's look at our passage a little bit. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. By the way, let me stop here a minute. In most churches, you hear this verse constantly. You know, because we preach expositorily and we're not all over the Bible, this verse isn't thrown out a lot. And, and I think it's kind of great because it's, it's pretty rare so let's look at it as a great gem tonight. Because I don't know that I've used this verse in the last year in any sermon. So let's listen to it. What it says, I beseech you, I beg you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Okay, now let me explain what that means. Because of the mercies of God. I beg you therefore, brethren, because of the mercy of God that was given to you on the cross, that ye present or offer your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now stop. Look, you, let's put it in modern vernacular. This is not inspired scripture. This is extreme paraphrase. I beg every one of you. Because God was so merciful, merciful to your life that he laid down his life on the cross. He gave you so much mercy. You deserve hell. He gave you great mercy. Because of that, I beg you that you present your body to him as a total sacrifice. Not one that's dead, but one that's alive. That you live for him every day, totally given to him. Isn't that just your reasonable thing to do? Okay, that's what this verse says. Look at the second verse. And be not conformed to this world. It is explaining more, more of how to give yourself as the living sacrifice. And be not conformed to this world. This is all about being the right kind of sacrifice to God. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That is the changing of your mind to think like God's mind by looking at his thoughts in the Bible. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let's talk about this a minute. We talked, we showed you in the Old Testament the, the vows that were so strong. Well, God asks a vow of us, a dedication, that because he gave us the free gift of salvation by his mercy, that we would present our bodies and in verse 2, our brains, our minds to be changed to think like him, our bodies to be used by him, the living sacrifice, that we would give it all. You can see the overtones of, of, can you see, talk back to me. Can you see in these two verses the overtones of Old Testament thought, of Old Testament sacrifice? Can you, under, can you see those words, words that sound Jewish? Okay, he wants us to remember what happened in the Old Testament. He wants us to remember the vows. He wants us to remember the sacrifices. And he wants us to apply it to New Testament living. We are told here that because of God's mercy or by the mercies of God that we Decide to do something that the mercy of God hits us. Let me ask you a question. All right, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to put somebody on the spot. Clive, if it wasn't for God's mercy, where...